<laughs> good evening and uh, good night. welcome to the studio so i slightly preoccupied there because i suddenly realized the camera this the first cam wasn't where it wasn't here at the top of the board it was actually above there on the other computer which is where it sits most of the time on camping um unless i put in a glass over there <laughs> either way anyway tonight i'm going to do magic dots <clears throat> Sorry about last night, those of you that may have wanted to watch last night and watch carving last night. Uh, but yesterday afternoon, uh, well actually sort of early yesterday afternoon, unexpectedly needed to, to visit the hospital rather urgently. Uh, well it's not an emergency but urgently and we left here about 12 o'clock. Didn't get back till 7, 7.15. And then, without, with not having had lunch, and uh, some of the medication that was required then needed to be taken with a meal, to make a meal. And by the time I made a meal and, and eaten it, it was half a steak. Oh, it would have been one. I tweeted earlier than that, but it, it was actually half a stay, I expected it to be about then. That's a bit late to start a stream, even when just doing this. Especially when I was about to stop at nine. And it'd been a really long day, I was absolutely crushed. So um sorry about last night if you were there for that, but um medical matters take precedence. So let's start with number four next. Hello, Wolfie. Yes, I'm okay, thank you. It was a family member that needed to. Uh, go to hospital and um, they would not have well they would not have been able to drive and so I had to be there they're testing again the as a tester so you're gonna look okay that's not a problem so yes I'm okay but uh, unfortunately as I've just mentioned um, we left here at left home at 12 o'clock and I didn't get back from the hospital till about quarter, about half past seven, and um, then making well, cosmetic the medication that they needed to take then required uh, they take it after a meal, and we hadn't had anything to eat all day anyway, so I then made a meal. And I, I knew it was going to be late by the time that finished, so, uh, although I did tweet earlier. Um, it was half past eight before we'd finished eating, so there was no practical way of doing a stream and not finish at nine o'clock. And uh, uh, by, by that time I was, completely, I was almost completely crashed out anyway. As soon as I had my tea I sat down and... Um, promptly fell asleep, so <laughs> it wasn't fantastically very good. My mic is weird, isn't it? It sounded okay, but... Let's have a listen. You find me with the hardest words Punch my chest till it hurts Picking up the pieces I think it's your end, Wolfie. Unless it sounds okay on the playback. Mm. The only thing would be, but now it's been recognised as a mono mic, I think. So. Music sounds nice, okay. 
and I'll have another listen to it. It's different. I haven't changed anything. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry. Uh, might be a bit hot, but um, it seems seems okay. Uh, I I can't. I haven't changed anything unless something else has gone odd. But it looks like it's also still recognising it as a mono microphone. Which might wonder. Okay, just in case, let me just have a look at the input on this and check it still thinks it's a mono microphone. Uh, open the volume up. Recording devices. It is possible it has switched it into mono. I can't seem to slow my mind down. In which case. Oh, so sorry, Wolfie. I will. It sounds okay as far as I can tell on the playback here. I haven't adjusted anything, and um, everything else seems okay. I guess just different. I don't know what the difference is, but I just have to go with it. I will check the stream afterwards. My brain's gone. Uh, not quite where it's gone. I'm not sure. How can I do something with this? I'm gonna put my hand on this thing. And I don't want to get sticky. Hmm. And uh, it's because I'm hitting the camera. Uh, if you if you see some camera suddenly move like then I keep hitting it. We do that. See if that keeps it out of my way. I guess what I what I what I what I really need for this I guess is a camera. Um, with a zoom lens so that I can stick it higher up and zoom in. This is a um, Logitech C920 and at HD resolution 1920 by 1080. It basically doesn't zoom. Uh, so if you want it closer, if you want a close up, you have to bring the camera closer. If I turn the resolution down, then I can I can zoom in. But uh, which just goes to prove that all the camera's doing is is a bit like a digital zoom. But right. well, I was about to say there aren't too many uh, HD cameras out there. There are. There's quite a few. Uh, if you use an analog cam, well, I say an analog camera again. They're not analog these days, they're kind of sort of. Uh, but the um, vid uh, video recorders, video recorders, video cameras uh, that have uh, data output, then of course you've got the full capability of the digital camera, um, such as zoom and things like that. But 
you also got the price of digital cameras. Would be nice. Um, some, some SLRs will do it as well, but uh, a lot of SLRs don't like being on continuously. But either way, unfortunately, at this moment in time, can't afford one of those. I'm just, I was about to say I'm stuck with the C920, I'm not stuck with the C920, it's not a bad camera. It has its quirks. It doesn't it's not fantastically happy with the colour blue. Although lighting has a big effect on that. And the lighting I've got here in the studio at the moment is actually better with blue. Well purple actually should I say. Um, it actually looks a little purplish, so some of it is the colour temperature, uh, as well as the camera itself. The camera seems to be a little bit more sensitive too. And the vacuum doesn't always pick them up, so just quick search for the thing. Today. Today what, Wolfie? Oh, and I was talking about cameras, yeah. Before I got distracted by dots going on the floor. Well, there's nothing particularly surprising about that, is there? I don't... <laughs> it, would, it would surprise me. I mean, I know devs get a lot of time to play their own game. That doesn't mean that they are good at it. They're good at programming it, but it doesn't mean they're good at playing it. They might know all the rules and um, all the shortcuts and things, but... Oh, you mean in terms of um, assistance? Okay. Well, competition like that is good if it helps people. Uh, what what, uh, what what was this game? Uh, or are you under NDA? It's a game about tech support. Okay. Fair enough. I played that one for real several lots of years ago. That's interesting that um, somebody thought of a game. Oh, 
So does 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 it have the um, does it have the scenarios like uh, it doesn't work and but did you turn it on? <laughs> it in real life it is as well. Um, providing you've got a user that isn't being um, well, I was, I was about I was about to make use of an oxymoron and say a user that's intelligent, um, but um, uh, yeah, it's, it is enjoyable when you've got a user that actually listens and is, is at least got some sense about them. In real life, it's quite good fun to help people. Well, if there's a, a website or otherwise uh, for the game, feel, uh, I'll let you uh, post a link to it, uh, Wolfie, if you'd like. I guess technically not that I can stop you, but I can, well, I can stop you by demodding you, but uh, uh, it, I'm not going to get into that race. <laughs> Indeed. At some point, you know, you're gonna, you're kind of gonna have to decide what you, what career you actually want to follow. I mean, you've got industrial designer, uh, you've got um, game development, game testing, and. Uh, furniture designer. Uh, well, that's possibly how it happens. I mean, game devs do talk to each other and things like that, so... But if you're good at it, then... Um, people will come and seek you out. Rising star there. Make sure you um, keep track of it uh, for a future CV. Be only in their own games. Game devs don't normally have a lot of cash to uh, to throw around unless they're a, a big game.
Uh, I'm surprised that that kind of surprises me in in a way in that um, you're not getting it for uh, for for free. But you know, it's a commercial thing, so. I mean, when a when a game has sort of thousands of testers or what have you, then you can kind of understand them not necessarily giving a, a copy away. But uh, if there's only one or two that have been uh, um, working on it at that level, then it surprises me. But mm, that's life. Oh, I wasn't suggesting you did ask for it. It's not hmm. just surprising. That's all. But yeah, you know, yeah. If you if you want to support them, I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's uh, there's loads of devs that wish a lot of people would think like that. <laughs> What uh, will be interesting for you, the more you do things like that, uh, Wolfie, is uh, if you do, if you decide to carry on developing your own game, or a new one that is, it'll give you a lot of insight into um, to things that go wrong and, uh, and and problems that people find, and uh, help you to uh, avoid those uh, when you're doing your own. Thanks for the water, for the host as well, Wolfie. No, it's all right. It's um, you know, you are supporting the stream by being here. You know, that in itself is um, is support. And for for a broadcaster whoever it is to have people that regularly join the stream join the join in the chat talk it makes broadcasting a lot easier than um, if I mean it, it's a lot easier when somebody talks than uh, than even sort of just having people you know you can have a hundred people watch if nobody talks it's still quite hard because the broadcaster is literally doing all the work then and having to basically talk non-stop for however long the broadcasting uh, non-stop-ish <laughs> um, and come up with uh, with subjects now it's okay it's, well, it's a bit easier when you're broadcasting again creative is a bit harder um, because you you know you you end up repeating yourself a lot whereas you're broadcasting a game there's always something different going on on screen but um, so talking and uh, being able to talk to someone, chat, you know, about different things. It's surprising when you're talking with somebody how wide ranging a discussion can become. As you know, we seem to go some real weird directions sometimes. So. It's okay. I know.
I uh, when I'm doing creative stuff, I know what I'm doing. Broadcasting, well, games. I don't. I, I only play a limited range of games, and I'm not. Um, I don't act for the camera. It's not something I I do. And so, you know, uh, broadcasting games is probably a lot less interesting <laughs> to watch. Uh, I think I've done it once or twice. Um, I have done it once or twice in the past. And um, that was because I had a cat sat on my knee and I wasn't going to attempt to carve with Junior around on my knee as it was at the time. And uh, I think I tried broadcasting Factorio at that point. Only it had cho chosen that day to uh, to do an update, which kind of broke things. So <laughs> um, that didn't work, and then Junie got down. So I started uh, carving. I think it was. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> let's see if I finish it first. Um, I, I I could ask you what you think it would be worth, um, Wolfie. It's um, our stone stuff is not something I've had any sort of involvement with. I mean, I could price things by the amount of time spent um, because I'm broadcasting it. I'm not necessarily working as fast as I might when I'm not broadcasting, especially when I stop talk, you know, stop and start talking. But um, So uh, that that's one way of pricing things, and but there again, sometimes these things uh, take a lot a lot of time, and um, there are few people that want to pay a commercial rate for uh, for that amount of work. So sometimes you just have to not charge as much for things. Let's have a look at them. Interesting. It's interesting. The first one is probably likely to be more commercial, uh, just because it's female. Female characters are always um, more commercial than 
the second one, I know the second one is female, but the first one is wearing less clothes. Um, Uh, I don't know, they're interesting, they're interesting things. Um, the, the second one is probably a bit for a relief card, the second one is probably a better subject because it's uh, it, you know, to, to replicate the the scene to some extent because of the the animal uh, it kind of fills the frame um, the first one it, it is more there's a lot of hair there which is filling the frame but isn't actually all that necessarily interesting $25 okay it's um, It's unlikely yet, Wolfie. Highly unlikely because of the. I mean, if you think, if you think, um, if you think it in in the UK, for example, um, if you if you were talking about uh, employing someone to do these sorts of things, the minimum wage would be seven pound an hour. So you're talking about four hours. Well, actually, you talk about two hours because of overheads and things like that. So um, that's a really fast carving, two hours. You might get something like that in pyrography in a couple of hours, uh, perhaps. Uh, not not a not um, a highly detailed thing or something like that, but. Because they're both they're, they're rather sort of physical things, you know, things like watercolour. Uh, particularly the second one is something that might be possible in a couple of hours. Um, the first one has got a lot more detail. <laughs> well, Just say a number. Yeah, just say a number. Um, you, well, it, it, it's underpricing it, but you'd be around sort of. About 80 UK pounds. Um, it's probably underpricing it, but in that, well, it's definitely underpricing it, I suspect. But in, it really depends on the detail and um, how careful you are at doing these things. But um, that's, uh, yeah. You've seen how much time it takes, Wolfie. I mean, let, me, let me ask you a question. If you were being asked to do some work and you were being asked to do 20 hours of work, how much would you want to be paid for it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from you. You're in about 80 pounds pocket money. Um, I can remember when I used to get sort of two or three shillings a month. Now that would be that that would be what about sixteen euro cents a month <laughs> when I was when I was young. <laughs> But yeah, if you think, think about it, if you, if, I mean, you talk about you know work level stuff, um, you know, 20, 20 hours of work for uh, de you know, detailed work, it's um, in a pyro, an A4 pyrography, it 
takes about 10 to 20 hours to do um, the carving. Depends on the subject and, and how much of it is detail and how much of it isn't. Um, because the, the less detail, the quicker it is to carve. Um, you know, if you can, you can do a lot of block carving, you can shift a lot of wood using a, a big gouge. Then uh, you can get through. You get a you know you can get a, lo a long way into it very quickly. If you're getting down into the details, and I'll give you for example, is all hair uh, and some fairly complex cut cutouts. So that's been taking quite a bit of time. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I understand it's uh, it's expensive. Um, I mean, if you, if, if you look at, I think um, the Gibbera, the last one was part 10. And okay, give or take a bit, that's that's 10 streams. So, yeah, some started late, some went on a bit later. So let's say that's about 20 hours. <laughs> well, as to whether it's perfect, down to you, but... Uh, the, the Gibber for me is the first time doing a fantasy character, okay? Because I've done things like animals, I've done, you know, done the cats and uh, the dragon. I've done the rose, some flowers. Um, so it's the first time doing a fairly complex image for me. And it's... Because of that, it, it is taking longer than, you know, it's practice. The more you practice, the quicker things become. But... Um, it is a fairly sort of thing, so I've never done that sort of fantasy character before, so um, you know, how long it take me to, for example, do one of the, the League of Legends ones? I don't know. Um, but we'll see how um, how it goes doing the, the finishing the giver, and then I can, you know, if I'm thinking, if I need, if I need those subjects, I'm quite happy to pick one of these up and we can whether you like it or not and if you do and you want to buy it then you can do and if you don't want to buy it that's okay it's um i've, I've kind of had the uh, same discussion sometimes with um, with people over things like the pyrography, or, or even uh, occasionally about about the jewellery, and it's um, you know they a lot of people sort of think you know it's fifty p a pound, two pounds that sort of thing, and it's kind of like well it's you know it's an hour or two's work, and you know, well yeah so why why do I have to pay you more than a couple of pounds? Okay, what job do you do? When you know you get some day, like, oh, let's just say drive a bus. Okay, so you'll drive a bus all day for me for five pounds, will you? And they go, no. Well, why do you expect me to do the same? You know, it's um, and I'm not specifically referring to you. It just surprises me that people, um, well, it doesn't really. People want something for nothing. <laughs> well, if I do want, we'll post some some of it there then. Um, since since I now have that app installed, I suppose I can uh, I can do that sort of thing. I kind of really ought to. Um, from the point of view, if I wanted to sell one of these things, then um, I really ought to uh, put it in places like that where people can see it and uh, consider. I haven't been fantastically. Um, very good at exploiting the opportunities, shall we say.
Marketing is one thing that takes an odd amount of time. And he's really hard to do. It's kind of um, in funny in some ways. Uh, it's it's a bit like a standing joke sometimes, and that is, people who are good at what the uh, what they do, you know, like art and whatever, are really often really bad at self promotion, because like you know, many artists always think that their work is not very good, and why would anybody want it? Uh, people who are not very good at what they do. Uh, are often very good at marketing <laughs> themselves. Yeah, it's actually, uh, there's a lot of artists, um, craftsmen, who will look at their own work and go, that's not very good. Why on earth would anybody want to you know, buy that sort of thing? And, uh, and therefore, uh, you know, they don't, they don't promote their work, they don't um, necessarily even put it up for sale and that sort of thing. Um, they, I think uh, lots of people, creative people, would love to actually sell their work. I mean, if, if they do, it's kind of an affirmation of the fact that it's, it has some value and, and somebody else likes it. And the bit that you know, a lot of artists find really difficult is that anybody could like what it is. So they, they don't. And yet, it, in some ways, the way in which they should um, should look at it is, well, yeah, as an artist, I may think this piece of work that I'm doing, whatever, is not very good. But you know what? I'll let somebody else make that choice for themselves as to whether they think it's good enough for them. You know, it might not be good enough for me as the artist, but for the person who might want it, let them decide for themselves. And it, it sounds easy to do and say is that, but it really is quite a hard thing for, uh, for many artists to, uh, to just get their mind around. And um, it's kind of something that I can't easily get my mind around and I've just said it. Um, you know, one of these things, saying these things is really easy to do. Doing them, hmm, that's a, that is a harder thing. And there's always the, but the next one will be better, therefore I'll wait for that one. Or, um, don't have the time because I'm busy learning how to do X or Y and it's kind of like uh, a chicken and egg. And it's really also kind of a snowball effect or bootstrap 
you know, once you once you start being able to do that sort of thing, people start being being able to see your stuff, then it you know it just keeps growing. And it's a case of if you don't uh, don't let people see you work, then people will never see you work, and they'll never, they'll never um, you know, things will never get better in quotes. You finally move the water in your attic the whole way after you trip for the second time. That's if I understood correctly. Why do you have water in your attic? In your attic? water coolers. Yeah, that's correct. Top floor, yeah. In English you put, you spell it A-T-I-C. And usually it's it's a room it's usually considered to be a room which is in the in the actual roof space, in the sort of in the apex of the roof. Yeah. I can understand that. It's 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 the water <laughs> bit that has me a little bit um, puzzled. Oh, a bottle of water. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I don't. Lady Zara drinks bottled water, so it shouldn't. I shouldn't be. I don't know why I didn't think of bottled water. I mean, what I was actually thinking of is, in in some offices, you get great big uh, water cool. You get water coolers with great big bottles of water, and the sort of thing that you know you you put your arms around and they weigh twenty five kilograms. Uh, and you tip them upside down and things, rather than small bottles. I was thinking of great big bottles. And thinking, why does somebody have? <laughs> but yeah, I can kind of understand the small bottles. Uh, ladies has them, and yeah, she does tend to stack them in all sorts of places, um, and then put them in the fridge. Me, I just get the water out the tap. Uh, I can't actually. Well, yes, I can tell the difference, but it's kind of like. So you want something that's been sort of underground and not, and, and it's got all this bacteria and stuff in it, and rather than something that's clean up, that I tease her with it. Yeah, they are two liters, one and a half liter, two liter, another sort of thing you mean. Oh well, that's that's true. I mean, it's um, uh, the the, <laughs> the nice thing there. The, well, I, I like I don't mind water. I drink water, I drink it out of the tap. And um, yeah, I don't have to walk downstairs or anything for it. In fact, I can just walk either way. Then they uh, actually I'd walk that way for the, um, if I wanted water, because 
the cold the cold water feet to the room that's the bathroom that's there where I could get water from. Goes uh, goes through the concrete slab in this room, which is heated <laughs> with um, hot water. So the cold water comes out warm. You should run it for an awfully long time if you want it cold. If I go if I go that way and go to either either the kitchen or the bathroom, the water that's coming out now is beautifully cold it's colder than the fridge and it's it's lovely cold and crisp and it's it's nice but actually i i was going to say i drink the tap water here and i'm in yorkshire in the uk if i go down south ugh, i can't don't like the water i would drink bottled water if i was down south the water tastes funny up here it's in god's country it's um it, it's beautiful water <laughs> Well, Lady Sarah won't drink tap water at all. It has to be bottled water. She says she can't, doesn't like the taste of her tap water. I kind of wonder one of these days whether to, and I haven't, and I probably never will, but whether when she's drunk a bottle is to fill it up from the tap, put it in the fridge, and wait and see if she decides it you know, works it out. Well, I haven't said which. That's why I say I don't drink bottled water. I do drink bottled water. I drink fizzy bottled water. Because um, I like I like water fizzed. And uh, if if I if I get if I uh, decide I want some flavour with it, I put put it with some juice, some cordial, you know, uh, concentrate, orange or whatever, and make a what would be a, a fizzy drink that way. And uh, I quite like drinking those. I've come across so far uh, one that's a, a grapefruit, few, a great f- grapefruit cordial, which with the fizzy water tastes just like grapefruit juice. And grapefruit juice isn't fizzy, so I don't quite know how that works. But it um, it's a lovely taste that way. But I am I don't pay a lot for it. I mean, I know. You can get these expensive waters that, you know, a two litre bottle is in the UK would be, I don't know, several pounds. Um, I pay 18 pence in the UK. That's probably about 20 euro cents for a two and a half litre bottle of fizzy water. And I won't buy anything more than that because it's, it's water. <laughs> I don't want to pay a lot of money for water. No. Um... I don't think it's terrible. I, I don't particularly care for it warm. Again, it's cold. The, the reason I, I... Well, there's two reasons I like it. One is if I'm dehydrated, which is giving me a headache. Fizzy drinks get into your bloodstream quicker than non-fizzy drinks. Don't know why, but apparently they do. So it hydrates you quicker. Um, but the second one is it has that bite. Uh, sharp taste to it which I, I like um, when I'm drinking cold water if I drink really cold water it has that same sort of sharp taste to it and that is kind of what I like so I mean it's only carbon dioxide so the the, the difference in taste is carbonic acid which is a mild acid so Yeah, so usually there's a bottle of fizzy water in there, yeah, in the fridge. Don't drink it very often, but uh, just there are times when 
I mean, um, I, I drink, I, I would often drink that in preference, say, to Coca Cola or Cola or something like that. So, better off, for, better for me as well. Mind you, if I do drink things like um, Cola drinks, Coca Cola, I do have the diet, the diet version, so don't get all the sugar. Kind of amazing how you get used to drinks without sugar. If I if I have normal Coca Cola now, it's kind of really sweet and smooth. But I drink coffee and tea now without uh, sugar. I have done for many years. I used to in a in a mug in a mug like this. This is what this is half. Is it half a liter? What will be a pint mug? in the UK, um, about half a litre I guess, and um, used to, would, in something like that I'd have about four spoonfuls of sugar, whether it was tea or coffee, and then um, for a while, probably for a couple of years, I was, ab I was able to drink tea, I always have been able to drink tea without sugar, and I just started, well what's the point, I might as well drink the tea without the sugar, uh, and I, that's precisely what I started doing, and uh, I can even drink tea without milk. I can drink tea, just tea on its own. Um, although I usually do have milk. And then one day it was kind of like, well, I'm drinking tea without it. Why drink coffee with sugar? And I just literally stopped taking sugar. Uh, went from two spoonfuls in a cup to, to nothing. Um, and I haven't had sugar in coffee since. Um, it was kind of like, yeah, it was. It didn't taste fantastically nice uh, the first few times, but it was just surprising how quickly I sort of got used to it and just drank coffee uh, uh, without any sugar at all. And now again, if I if I do come across coffee with sugar in it, it's really so sweet and. I guess it just sort of illustrates how easily you get used to something, to a taste, you know, and uh, I, I don't find, I don't, well, I was about to say I don't have coffee bitter, that's not true. I can find coffee bitter, it depends on the coffee. <laughs> um, in, if, I, if I'm having coffee made with water, which is how I normally uh, like it, because um, there are people who make it with milk yep. uh, and I don't mean things like cappuccino or, or latte I mean because they're made with water and then they put the milk in um, but there are some people that physically make it with milk but uh, with the uh, there's really only sort of one instant coffee that I drink and that's uh, in the UK it's called Gold Blend I used to try a lot of coffees uh, a long time ago and I came across that and uh, I liked it and I've never drunk anything else, no, never, that's not you know, what I mean, I don't drink anything else other than that normally, I mean, if I'm out in a hotel and there's these little sashes I'll have whatever they are but you know it's uh, my favourite coffee is Gold Blend coffee. Although just recently they changed it. They, they, they describe it as finer ground now, or ten times finer ground. And what it what it does is, um, if you've ever had um, co uh, coffee ground coffee beans, and they sort of push it, push steam, hot water steam through it to make the coffee. What you often get in the bottom is kind of like a black powder, which is the coffee, um, which is really bitter. So I don't know if it's got anything to do, well, whatever it comes from. Get that now in the coffee cup. So the last little bit has got this kind of piffed it before. I don't think there's new fangled, ten times found a finer ground for more flavour, but I can't taste any difference in flavour apart from at the end when it's horrible because of all this this black powder which is just stuff out of the grind but 
What are you up to? Excuse me a second while I just investigate whatever it is that Theo is after. Because it's just as possible he's got something in. What are you... Microphone lead, that's a that is the lead from the soldier now. Come on, come and say hello to the people on the street. So, this Theo is busy trying to attack the end uh, the soldering area, it's temperature control soldering, so the plug that goes on the end into the control unit. He was busy trying to um, trying to chew on that, and because of where it was, it was effectively trying to get away from him. <laughs> it's an elephant. Laser, hello. Yeah, being a typical cat, indeed. He looks like a typical cat as well, doesn't he? All cute and it wasn't him, you know, it was it it, it was it was the it was the plug that just kept leaping into his mouth. You know, and he was closing his mouth to stop it getting in there, but it was a bit slow. And yeah. Eh? He left, I'll put you down. He's thumping his tail. His tail's going like that on, on me, isn't it? And uh, he's a bit... Hello. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm clean. Oh, that's nice to know. He just... He just licked my ear, but just once. <laughs> Really weird feeling is that as well. You're gonna go to, you look like you're going to sleep. So we put you down. You can go curl up somewhere. Put you down on my chair. There you go. He'll probably he'll probably just I uh, just put him down on my chair and he'll probably um he is he's curling up. Another wash and go to sleep. Uh, he is a handsome, he's, he's a 13, 15 month old kid. Uh, I'm doing too quite well, Laser. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, physically I'm doing quite well. There's um, other things going in life that makes things a little bit awkward at the moment, but now um, yeah, we we'll just carry on. What have you been up to in this, uh, in the interim? Because it's, uh, I'm just trying to think now, what are we now in? March? Uh, February, we're not quite in February, are we? So I've now been streaming 10 months since I started, since I, yes, we started, started streaming again. So, in theory, I guess it's, I'm coming up to three years since I first started streaming. Oh, it'll be something like early April. It'll be three years, although I, as you know, I, there's a year off in the middle of that. And I was... I just remember seeing a dot down here that come loose! Actually, come loose. First time I've seen one ever come loose. So what's uh, what's new for you, Laser? Um, I think you've dropped in here a couple of times, haven't you? Just relatively uh, recently. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you've um, you've dropped in whilst I've, since I've been here. Well, in the last year, <laughs> since I've been here in the new studio. 
because you all remember that um, back when I had the old studio, the um, uh, two foot square piece of, uh, of desk that had the keyboard behind it and the cats kept walking over and things. Oh, it's kind of more things like um, emotional as such, really. It's it's other activities. Let uh, a completely fictitious example. It's like a car breaking down all the time, or uh, you know, it's 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 outside of stuff that's outside of your control that's happening, and uh, uh, you are just yeah. You know, Biding, biding time, if you like, until it goes away. You know, it's like if you always had a car that kept breaking down, and you knew you were going to sell it in six months, and you know you're just waiting for that six months. And it's, it's not a car, and it's, but it's, you know, it's that sort of thing. Your telephone dies. Oh, that's not very good. Oh. Yeah, um, I was uh, I was about to say I'm kind of uh, hope that doesn't happen to us. Uh, it, it could well it, it, it's less likely now because at one point we had a tree here in the front garden and the telephone line went straight through the tree. Well, not through, but you know through the branches and things. And um, that tree used to come <laughs> because of forwards in the wind and it gets windy here. And I envisaged a time at one point that tree or some part of it was going to come down, and the lines would come with it. Although um, it, it, it wouldn't have been down for three weeks then. But I am, I am kind of glad we, we can, because of the intervening houses. I can't actually see the exchange, but if there were no houses, I would be able to see our local exchange. So. Um, I am. I could ju well. I would say, I, I I don't know what I'd do. Well, for a start, I'd have to go working in the nearest town because <laughs> uh, I use the uh, internet lines for work as well. We can do without the phone. Mm, not bothered about the phone. I mean, we not many people call on the phone, and uh, the a lot of the calls we do get are spam calls advertising and trying to sell you things and uh, we have a phone now that um, when you when they ring the number the phone answers and basically says who are you they have to record their name if they don't record the, their name the phone goes okay well here's the entry machine uh, if they do record the name it then rings we can listen to the name and if we don't want to um, talk to the person um, we just, or we look at the number and we don't want to talk to the person, we just say, no thank you, and the phone will then give them the answering machine. So we, we used to get about four or five spam calls a day. We now get none. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but, uh, so we could do without the phone, but the internet's a bit, you kind of really get used to it. I mean, it's, I'm using it now, obviously, of course, and uh, so I wouldn't be able to stream. Um, I don't watch television, so I do watch videos on either Twitch, YouTube, or, or wherever, um, if I want to watch something. So I'd kind of uh, be lost with that. I'm thinking, luckily my mobile phone does have unlimited data, so I would be able to watch things on the mobile phone, but it's a small stream and uh, it wouldn't be pleasant. Not for three weeks. So I do not envy you at all, sir. Uh, hopefully, well, I was about to say, hopefully it's working now. I was about to assume that it is working because you're talking to me, but that could be because you're on a mobile phone. What made them go down for three weeks anyway? That's um, that's a heck of a lot of uh, time. That sort of thing would be a, a cable failure somewhere. That's an awfully long time for telephone lines to be down anyway.
going to have a drink of tea. I was talking about tea earlier and it reminded me I've got some and now I keep wanting to drink it. Surprising how you get used to um, to watching them, isn't it? I mean, um, it's, it's kind of weird that you, you don't necessarily realise how much time you spend watching them until you can't. Although one of the, one of the I would say weird odd things I've noticed it, for me anyway, or just for me, is um, when I go on holiday, I... yeah, we do take a phone because it's useful to have one in case you want to use it. But actually, I usually switch it off and I don't actually switch the phone on. Literally, I power the thing down um, whilst we're, we're, we're away on holiday. And um, I don't go on the internet at all. And I don't, I do not miss it. I, you know, I can, I don't worry about, don't, you know, don't think watch it and why am I not watching things or stuff like that and uh, we kind of you know what we're aware we'll go through the hotel lobby on an evening for example there's everybody there on, on laptops and um, okay there's some business people in the in the hotel but you know just holiday makers with a with a big like the 17 inch laptop and things like that thinking, why do you really want to bring one of those on holiday um, I, you know, okay, I can understand that some people with a phone want to keep in touch, whatever, you're with family members perhaps and things, but yeah, the sort of people with, I don't quite understand, you know, taking a laptop on holiday. Well, I mean, it's, I kind of understand that for people uh, you know, going using a laptop or you know, playing games or whatever is relaxing. It's something that you do on holiday. But then it's kind of why go to a foreign country to do what you? Because that's where holidays. You know, what fine? Why go to a foreign country and spend all your time doing what you could do at home? But all right, I guess. Generally speaking, it's warmer. Turn the heating up. Oh, you get all your meals made for you. Oh, okay, that's a benefit, but... Cable theft. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it will do. But it dep depends on how... Um, uh, on how... big a cable it is, of course, and whether they've got cable in stock or have to have... or we get it, but yeah. Unfortunately, that's uh, yeah. Copper is expensive. It's um, something I uh, am familiar with, or was familiar with. Um, I do work in the telecommunications industry, and uh, copper theft from uh, cables is um, a bad thing. I mean, they they even do it with power cables and things like that. You know, they they literally will take. Um, uh, sort of a 22, you know, uh, a 22 kV underground cable. They'll just come in with big cutters and go straight through it. And it's, mm, but yeah, that must have been a big spark when it went. Um, but the telecommunications cables as well. It's um, yeah, and they uh, quite often, you know, they they just cut. Whatever's in in sight, and then um, we'll go go somewhere and just rip it out, and they rip, you know, they damage all sorts of things in ripping it out, and damage the ducts and and other cables that might be around it, and uh, it can take an awfully long time to uh, to sort it out, especially if they've done things like damage the underground ducts that the uh, cable was in. Yeah, we have phone, yeah, it's just the same kind of thing. You know, if we need it to use it, we can turn it on. I mean, we have had that situation in the past. 
where for various reasons we need it to be in touch but we still didn't carry the phone it, it stayed in a it <laughs> I, I yeah I've just realized it's it we left it switched on but it stayed in a safe and I've just thought that safe was a metal safe which means it was a Faraday cage which means the phone wasn't in contact anyway and it was wasting its power trying to get a signal out safe but hmm um so I might as well have switched it off. <laughs> uh, oh well. Uh, but yes, for kind of emergencies, that is uh, a useful, uh, useful purpose for it. But um, I, w I was kind of about to say just then. I mean, I've even even seen people with laptops on the beach, and then they've got sort of a, a unless they were happen to be sat under an umbrella. But even then, they kind of have like a towel over the top of them, so that they can actually see the screen. And it's kind of like <laughs> you you you're on a beach, and you know you've just covered yourself over, and made it dark, so that you can actually see this screen and. Again, somebody who's using it for an emergency purpose might want it on the beach in that particular circumstances. Yeah, the odd one maybe. Yeah, but I've seen sort of ten and fifteen people like that, and it's kind of no, I do not, I do not understand. Having said which, um, I mean I have a Kindle, electronic book reader. Um, I don't cover myself up with that because. I can read it in pure sunlight, but um, I actually don't particularly like sitting out in the sun because I get too hot. And so I, I sit, on, sit under an umbrella and I read a book and whilst I'm reading, everything is gone. I do not, it sounds daft, but I don't see anything, I don't hear anything. Obviously I see what I'm reading, but what I'm seeing is my imagination about what I'm reading, if you see what I mean. I lose contact with the, the outside world. So I guess I'm kind of similar to those people with a laptop in a way. I'm not, I'm, I'm sat on the beach and yet yeah, I could be sat anywhere reading a book, but. <laughs> you want to throw your keyboard? Some things can be frustrating. Um, it happens monthly. Oh, that is really bad. Well, of course, phone cables don't generally carry, carry. Well, they do carry power, but they don't carry a lot of power. They're not. Um, I don't know about your location in the UK. Phone cables carry 50 volts DC. And you can handle that without feeling any effects. Uh, ring is 80 volts AC. That you feel, but on a sort of even on a reasonably sized cable, there isn't that much ringing going on at the same time. Um, so there's not uh, uh, there's no power as such. Um, you know, it mains, yeah, obviously. But um, uh, the um, uh, telephone cables, no, uh, uh, you, I was going to say you can cut, you, well, the engineers do cut them when there's power on them, so they, uh, you know, there's no, um, nothing particularly about it. There's no, there's no sort of switches in, I mean, well, in most exchanges, no sort of switches to switch power off like that, so. Um, but monthly for a year, you know, you kind of think the local police would get involved at that. Um, and uh, and do something about it. Uh, it is, it's a big problem for a lot of communications providers is metal theft. Um, the big two or three in the UK um, go after them quite quite strongly. They all, a lot of them have um, monitoring systems that tell them immediately when a cable gets cut and roughly where it is cut and, and the police are on uh, scene fairly quickly because it's not 
Mm -hmm. it, it takes a fair amount of time to steal a cable. Although they have done, um, have seen reports of them sort of tying it to a to a, a lorry and just driving, uh, towing about a mile of cable behind them. And one thing they've done in the UK is they've made, or they've made, made it a criminal offence uh, for the scrap dealers to handle cable that the scrap cable that the um, the person trying to sell it to them can't prove where it came from and prove ownership and they they have you know they've taken quite a few other scrap dealers uh, to court for not having um, records of you know legitimate cable ownership before they um, they accept it and that seems to have um, helped an awful lot Ironically, um, one, one of the things that helps metal theft for telephone cables uh, would be making them out of aluminium, because aluminium isn't particularly valuable. Uh, and for telephone calls it's not bad, but for um, internet, broadband, uh, aluminium is a terrible metal to use. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of ironic that uh, Copper uh, is uh, she's good for broadband. Makes it a uh, makes it a target. Well, one day they'll all be glass fiber. I was going to say glass fiber, and then potentially that will stop that kind of theft just because of course uh, it's not uh, it's not that valuable there's no uh, not much it no there's nothing uh, no scrap value in it well i um, I truly hope that uh, it's uh, a problem that has got solved for you at that end, and uh, you know, keep getting the uh, the new cable cut, and you are going to be able to continue to watch the internet in peace. And I do not know why the thought just crossed my mind, but for some reason I was just thinking then about um, uh, wordplay. Um, there's a lot of these things out that I've seen. I don't read Reddit. I have seen things about Reddit, which is talking about uh, people doing things like ask me anything type things. And I was just thinking, that's an interesting statement because... Whilst you can ask me anything on those things, they don't say they'll answer every question. <laughs> no, they'll answer everything. Um, which can kind of makes the concept of ask me anything completely pointless or worthless. Hmm. And how's that as a jump from telephones? <laughs> yeah, grad gradually in the U uh, fiber is gradually getting rolled out in the UK, but it's expensive stuff. Is fiber, and uh, um, it's um, of of fiber all the way to the you know to the premises is expensive stuff. And it's kind of um, a bit more complicated for than the good old copper cables are. 
And I guess old being the operative word. Your tilt is next level. Mm, don't quite understand that, Wolf. Well, no, I don't. There's no quite about it. <laughs> oh dear. We use a lot of funny language, don't we? Don't quite understand that means. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, oh, and, and that doesn't sound very nice, but uh, you know, we, we use. I don't, I don't quite follow, I don't, don't, don't quite know what you mean. Basically, you know, I have not understood anything of what it is that you've just said. And we still, we still do that, and it's kind of like, well, which bit of it did you think you understood? I, I, I often want to ask people that who say, I don't quite understand what you just said. And it's kind of, okay, well, which bit did you think you understand? I'll have to ask that one day, especially at work when somebody does that to me. As you know me, I'm quite happy to explain anything that I'm doing or whatever. And it, the same applies at work, but people don't usually ask. I don't know if it's because they, they uh, have got used to people sort of not liking being questioned or whatever. But I kind of just take it that if somebody's having to ask me what I mean, it means I wasn't very clear about what it was I was saying. Um, and I don't get, I don't take offence about it or anything as, as you you guys all know from uh, from watching and uh, I, I don't think a lot of people are particularly used to that and um, so I think that one of these days I will I will say to somebody well what bit did you understand just to uh, have a little bit of fun Work can sometimes be an endless source of entertainment. Both in sort of historical terms, like I have done computer support in the past, so you know, people ringing up about computers that don't work because they're not switched on um, is you know, perfectly true and, and amusing sort of stories. And, and then there's the day-to-day -day things that people do or say. That, uh, keep it interesting, going to work every day. Not that I have a choice about it, unfortunately. It's, um, it's not like I sell uh, two or three carvings a day or <laughs> pyrography or things like that. That would kind of be nice, but... Actually, I say, I say it would kind of be nice. I don't actually know. I've said it in the past. I, you know, I kind of like, I, I like airbrushing. I like uh, pyrography. Yeah, I like a lot of crafts. And it, you know, wouldn't it be nice to do this as a job? And I kind of wonder sometimes whether it actually would. Yeah, you know, because as a hobby, you, or even just streaming things like this. You don't, you've no deadlines, you can take your time. It's something that's fun to do. And yet, when you have to do it, you've got a deadline to meet, or you've got so many to do, or you've got to sell so much to make enough money to pay a particular bill, or whatever it is. Will, would it be as much fun? You know, would it be um, as enjoyable as it is um, when, it's, when it's not your job? I mean, I know I enjoy my job. I like doing my job, and I might, and it might well be that it's kind of a similar idea. But with my job, I get paid, 
and I get paid whether I get interrupted, I get paid if I'm asked to do something different. Whereas, you know, when you're working for yourself and you're doing something like high rubber, if you don't do it, you don't get paid. And that's a completely different dynamic, so... You finally did it! Yeah, oh yeah! Yeah, Layers that that's... that is not unusual. It, it's... now, okay, it's... Um, I did comp computer support what would be about 20 years ago now. 20, 20 to 30 years ago. Computers were relatively new, but we had before that there were terminals. So, same sort of thing. Um, so, I mean, I remember using the f one of the first IBM P not the first, but in the company I worked, the first IBM PC that just came out. Uh, it was sat on my desk. Um, and the first laser printer in the business was in the office. And we put out better quality letters than the uh, notes, well, office memos, if you like, than the um, company typists were sending out to customers typed. But anyway, um, yeah, we would, in sort of that era, if you like, we would often get, uh, the computer's not working. I'm typing, nothing's happening. Okay. Can you see anything on the screen? Uh, yeah, I can see this green stuff. Can you see any letters on the screen? Uh, yeah, there's this label underneath. No, no, no. On the green stuff, are there any letters glowing? No. Oh, okay. At the bottom right, next to that, you know, those letters you noticed, is there a green light? Uh, yeah, it's really dim though. Uh, okay, it's really dim. As in, it's not turned on. Um, right. There's a power switch just around the side. What what position is that in? And you, you, some, you will get people say, well, it's vertical. <laughs> no, is it? Which side of it's best in? Uh, okay, uh, the bottom. Okay, well that's the on bit. Uh, okay, is it plugged in? Uh, well, it, yeah, it's, I can see it's plugged into the power socket. Okay, is the power socket turned on? Uh, no. Well, you, you, quite often you get no at that point. Well, turn it on. Oh, it lights up. Uh, but if you got a uh, yes, it's plugged in. Okay. Get hold of the lead that's coming out of that plug that's plugged in and follow it. Is the other end plugged into the back of the screen? You need to check that as well. Uh, and quite often that had got unplugged. Um, then you, what you'd have to do is start doing the same thing with the base unit uh, as to whether that was turned on, whether it was plugged in and whether it was connected from the base unit to the screen and whether the keyboard was... You need to go through it all like that. Well, yeah, but it, I am told that the, you still get those sorts of questions these days um, by some of the support guys at work. <laughs> um, yeah, oh no, I mean, it, it's it's hilarious when you think about it, but, uh, um, oh, for a good 10 years before that, the company had been using terminals, so... Um, the way in which the company I was working in, what we had was, we, each desk had a, a, a terminal. Um, so if you're not familiar with that, if you like, it's, a, it's the equivalent of a computer running a terminal emulator program these days. But it, it, but it was a single purpose, just a terminal. All it did was send stuff and display stuff that came back. No intelligence in it at all. Those were all connected to um, what was effectively a great big switch. Uh, that would route a bit like a telephone exchange for telephones, but for a telephone exchange, if you like, for terminals, which would route things to the various computers. So we had multi-user computers back then, and um, you could, uh, you know. instead of connecting your computer across the internet to something, you connected your terminal across this switch to something. 
Um, and even then it was, uh, you know, the, um, the computer's not working because they were connected to a computer. Well, it we then had to go through the troubleshooting of the terminal. Is the terminal plugged in? Is the keyboard plugged in? Uh, does a, you know, is there a light on the keyboard when you push the caps lock key? Um, but then it was, we then had to sort of troubleshoot into um, all, all the other things. And yeah, and, and if you think about it, that was just getting the thing on. Then when they started using applications, <laughs> oh dear. It was, um, uh, yeah, it was completely hilarious, the sort of things that you, uh, you got. And of course, um, you know, shall we say there were various industry specific um, abbreviations that sort of explained where the problem actually lay. I mean, a more, uh, a more recent example of that is PEPCAC, for example. Problem exists between keyboard and chair. If you were being really uh, sort of um, polite, you'd just say use a missile. <laughs> but. I'm trying to think of. Now, oh, yes, I, I think I've mentioned this, the uh, story before, but uh, I just mentioned then the sort of the terminal switch that we used to have. It, it, it we we had something like about three or four hundred terminals connected to it, so it was about two, three racks of stuff, um, and they each each uh, so each shelf, which stood about sort of that sort of high used to have these cards in it, which were the switching uh, terminal interface cards and switching cards, and they all had lights on the front. So there was about three racks full of lights. And we used to have that, and we used to have um, deck computers, Digital Equipment Corporation computers. We used to have a VAX mainframe in the same room. Now, that and, and its um, front-end processor, which was another VAX, sat next to it. Were really expensive stuff, really sort of high-tech, really sort of fancy stuff. Any visitors that came in though, what, what we used to do is we, we'd throw the, the, um, the terminal switch into test mode and it still worked as normal to everybody else but what it did in test mode is it, it lit up every single LED across the full system but it would do it in various test patterns uh, one of which was like a wave just running across and then there'd be all flashing and all sorts of stuff. And uh, when it, whenever we had visitors we used to do that because we very quickly dis discovered that um, visitors, especially those that were less technical minded shall we say, uh, were completely um, taken in by flashing lights, it's blinking lights as it gets called, because um, it sounds more technical, it's sort of slightly Germanish, I guess, Germanic and uh, as in blinking lights. And uh, yeah, any visitors sort of, you know, you get sort of high level visitors come in or customers and you just, all these lights flashing, They're extremely impressed by these flashing lights. Not by the Vax, just there's a few boxes, you know, just down the, down the room there, sort of several hundred thousand pounds worth of equipment but by all these blinking lights which I thought was extremely high-tech and things and it was just in test mode. As soon as they left we turn it off and it got dark and then work normally. And the other one that come on at times because that was its fault indications and things but it was uh, blinking lights. <laughs> yeah Oh yeah, they turn it off and on again. That that's real. It is real. Turn it off, turn it on again. What whatever is um, at one point uh, I used to support Microvax computers, um, which if you think of a tower PC and think of about 
school of them. Joined together side by side. That's about the size of a microvax. Back, well, it still is a powerful computer. It would handle sort of a couple of thousand terminals, uh, which is a couple of thousand users, which is quite a powerful computer if you think about it. Um, although in terms of pure processing power, these days a modern computer, a modern desktop computer is significantly more powerful but couldn't do what the VAX still can do. Um, we used to support uh, those and, uh, around the country and even then one of the things that if, if we got really stuck with it, it would be, well effectively we used to call it, we used to just say bounce it because we were talking to people that knew what we mean. But effectively that was shut it down, turn it off, turn it back on again. And so even then, you know, the big mainframes we didn't do that with, but the, the little uh, microvaxes, it was sometimes quicker to just bounce it than it was to do anything else. <laughs> well, we've, we have had things like, um, you just reminded me of one, a call that I remember once. Um, the monitor's not working. Okay. What's wrong with it? Well, it's just not just not working, and there's the smoke coming out the top. The smoke coming out the top. Can you turn it off? Yeah. Okay. So go away to now. The smoke stop. Yeah. Um. What you know? Did it just start like that, and then they go, they, they went. Um, well, could it have been me that did that? Well, why do you think that? Well, I had my cup of tea on the top, and I spilt it. Uh, well, you know, I knocked it over, um, but it seemed to be okay for a bit. Oh, okay, <laughs> had that, and and you know, well, keyboards were typically that. Um, uh, keyboard, the keys are stuck. Okay. So the first, we got to the point with the, with, if it was a key, stuck keyboard, the first question we used to ask is, um, have you been drinking, have you spilt Coke over this? Because Coca Cola, this, the fact that there's so much sugar in it, um, it, um, it means that it gets so, so sticky that it actually holds the keys down. Um, but it, but yes, but that was yesterday. Yeah, that's when I thought it happened, because <laughs> it takes a, it takes so. For what used to happen is, if you spilt coke over a keyboard, it actually wasn't. It would actually carry on working for quite a long time. Uh, the coke didn't, for some well, it depended on the keyboards we were using anyway. The coke didn't actually sort of get to any of the conductive stuff to stop it working, but overnight it would dry out still the first and get really sticky because of the sugar and the first thing when they come in the morning and start typing keys went down and didn't come back up but that was uh, one of the uh, one of the things we used to do with us is just we take the keyboard away uh, and just sit it under a running, uh, a running hot water tap for about 10 minutes and then just leave it in a in in the office for a couple of days just to dry out, and then it worked perfectly. My stream is messed up. Okay, uh, well, as far as I know, it's okay by me. Um, he says. Now then, um, I'm just uh, restarting the browser on here because. The video's frozen. Yeah, okay. Uh, why is the video frozen? Hmm. That's the output.
This is odd. I've got. I do have a what? Okay. This is this is not something I'm going to be able to fix as such. Uh, at least to fix this, I'd have to bounce the stream. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? I'd have to turn it off and on again. Uh, I am sending frames out. I have I have got an encoder overload warning, but. It's not actually overloaded, and it's uh, I've not dropped any frames whatsoever. Uh, I am still sending out a clean signal to um, to Twitch, um, although it is it is running quite high on the CPU. I'm running about 40% CPU instead of about 25. Uh, so the yeah the encoder's working again now. The encoder's happy again. Um, It seems to be, it seems to be Twitch. Yeah, I've dropped again. Back down to normal, normal sort of processing levels. It seems to be Twitch that's having a problem. Are we back now? Yeah. I can see that the it's odd because Twitch is um, Twitch is still sending uh, a signal out with no problems. It's just um, sort of very low frame rates, isn't it, coming out of Twitch? As in almost no frame rate. It's having, let me just try something at this end. Okay. I can only go to source, but... Okay, that's not doing anything. Mind you, I've just done a reload, so... Um, no, I did not mean to do that. Okay, let me. One other thing I can just take a look at. No, even my own live preview on Twitch is um, got a very extremely low frame rate. Is, sorry, yeah, okay. My my analysis of this decoding, uh, sorry, my decoding of this analysis. So I'm back to computer support stuff now. Is okay. Uh, I have definitely had the computer working hard, but not hard enough to drop frames. So um, that kind of indicates that I'm, I'm sending a good clean signal out to Twitch. Twitch has got something called a uh, stream quality monitor uh, which is quite happily claiming that I am sending it a good signal uh, at around 2.5 megabits per second it's it's a steady uh, thing so I'm not I'm not getting bandwidth variations or anything like that uh, Twitch then sends my on stream back to me for monitoring purposes and that is starting to recover by the looks of it, but the frame rate is really low. It, it, it's coming in bursts. I'm watching that. And I'm now seeing the same thing, sort of thing happening a little bit on the actual broadcast output. Yeah. It's, um, the frame rate is weird. I have just noticed something, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I tell you what, I'm going to stop counting at that point. There is something... There's like a, at least a two minute delay. Stream delay. Um, what I noticed, yeah, there's at least a two minute stream delay. So you're not going to hear this for another two minutes. Uh, the thing I noticed is just under here is this. That seemed to still be moving when I looked. Um, so, uh, but at that point, then I, I was looking, and everything seemed to have, uh, have started up. Because, uh, because at first I thought one of the, I thought this this camera had frozen. Um, but I knew it hadn't because I could see the movement on the on the outgoing stream, and then I realised it was just because I wasn't moving. <laughs> Because uh, I was watching my own sort of playback, and um, uh, it wasn't moving because I was sort of stood looking at over there, uh, and because I, I then saw the text was scrolling, and then I saw the saw the movement on the monitor. So it looks like Twitch has something, but we're currently about two minutes, or you're two minutes behind me. Uh, but I think the <laughs> hmm. so F and F. Fault not found. I think it is that um, that one, uh, but I think I will attribute that fault to Twitch, probably to its um, ingest server. Um, although it was communicating quite happily with me, it uh, was not. It wasn't sending back a, uh, back the um, the video for for my um, preview of what it's going to feed out. Uh, it, it that picture was frozen as well, but it was still quite happily accepting the feed from me the stream, and uh, it looks now to have tidied up itself. Whether it will actually catch up on that uh, two minutes or not, I don't know. Um, so we are, however, now at ten past nine. So that was an interesting end of the stream, I think, to um, diagnose why the, the video froze and the audio didn't. Which incidentally should have told me something, you know, because um, the video and audio are not two separate things. They're interlaced with each other. They're interleaved. And so if you were getting audio, you had... No, I'll, I will put it this way. If you were getting audio then Twitch had to be getting the video as well. 
and for it to be able to send you the audio it had to have been getting it from me and it, get, it gets the video in between the audio or the audio between the video um, kind of like that if you see what I mean um, so that should have told me that I was sending correctly to, to Twitch but it's easy after the fact to go yeah I should have realised that anyway I, yeah, I was expecting to see about 30, 40 seconds stream delay. When it got to 90, I thought, this is getting a bit long. When it got to 120, and you're probably still hearing it, aren't you? <laughs> when it got to 120, well, I say, you won't be when it gets to hearing me say you're still hearing it, but at the time I'm saying it, you might still be. Um, yeah, when we got to 120, I figured you're going to get tired of me counting. Uh, and I'm going to get tired of counting. And then it, 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 um, that measured the delay. Anyway, I'm going to say thank you for putting up with that interesting interlude of working out where the stream problem was and, um, how insights after the fact sometimes can make it, make things go, why didn't I realize at the time it would have saved a lot of trouble? You often have that in computer support. You look back on things and, and realise that you were told the answer right at the start, but you didn't actually realise it. I will continue with this again tomorrow night. Hopefully without the two minute stream delay and without the uh, stream problems. So if anybody who's watching wants to come back, and see it without a two minute delay. Mind you, you can't really tell the difference unless you ask me something in chat and you have to wait four minutes for the reply. Um, if anybody who's watching would like to come back and see it, then see me tomorrow night. That'll be from about 7pm UK time, that's GMT. We will continue putting more of these dots on the screen. Incidentally, the white little dots that you see around here, all over the place, aren't. That's the, that's the sparkle. If I just move, no, I won't do it. If I just move the, move something a little bit, there we go. You can see they move. So the white little dots that you, you're seeing on there are actually the reflected light. That's the sparkle that you get uh, when you uh, move past these pictures. You can see why they, you know, partly see now why they they look so so beautiful when they're done. Uh, because of that, uh, that sparkle effect. Anyway, so yes, tomorrow night, 7pm UK time. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you on the next stream. Bye for now.